Now it's quite common to find yourself having to expand expressions say something like this, 3 plus 2x all to the power 4. And to do that you might write down all the four brackets. You might then go on to expand the last two brackets, get something like this, a quadratic expression. You'd go on to simplify that, say, giving you this. And then multiply the 3 plus 2x by everything in this bracket. Starting to get quite long now. Tidy up this expression here in the next line. There it is, tidied up. And then finally expand the two brackets again giving you this horrendously long expression, and then just simplify that. OK, and finally you get the right answer. Imagine what this is going to be like though if it was say to the power 5. Five of these brackets, a few more lines to go. What happens if it's the power 10 say? It'd be way down here, and it'd be horrendous. Oh, I would hate to do it. So there's got to be an easier way. Well, indeed there is. It's called the binomial expansion. I'll take you through it. If you've got a bracket that's got two terms in it of the form, let's say, a plus b, raised to a positive integer. Now, I do stress it must be to a positive integer. Like this example up here, this was a positive integer 4. Positive integers, remember, are numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Then this is identical, it can be shown that this is identical to something called nc0 times a to the power n and then b to the power 0 plus another term, and I'll go through these terms in a minute, but just want to return back to this function nc0, often called ncr in general. Now what I'm doing is, I'm going to carry on with this formula, but I'm going to assume that you know what this function is. Now if you don't, I've written a tutorial on this showing you how to work this out manually, or how to do it on a calculator. And you'll find a link to this at below this tutorial. OK, so I'm going to assume then that you know what NCR is. So our first term then is NC0. You take A, raise it to the power N, and you take your second term and you raise it to the power 0. We continue a pattern similar to this, OK, for the next term. We write NC and then we increase the 0 by 1. And we now reduce the power of a by 1, so it becomes a to the n minus 1. And we increase the power of b by 1, so this becomes b to the power 1. We move on to the next term, which is going to be nc2. Reduce the power of a by 1. It was n minus 1, so we reduce it by another 1, so it becomes a to the n minus 2 and increase the b power by 1, so it was b to the power 1, it's now b to the power 2, b squared in other words. Moving on to the next term, hopefully you can guess what it's going to be, just give you a moment just to think about it. Okay. Hopefully you thought that it will be nc3, then it will be a to the n minus 3, and then increase the b power by 1, b cubed. And it's going to go on like this all the way down to the last term. And the last term would be ncn. And the a would eventually be a to the power n minus n, which would be really a to the power 0. And b would have gradually built up to b to the power n. So I want you to remember this formula, OK? because it is incredibly efficient at working out expansions like the one that we have above. Okay, and I'm going to demonstrate that to you now. So we'll take the 3 plus 2x to the power 4, 3 plus 2x then to the power 4. You can see that the a is the 3 and the b value is the 2x and n is 4. 
So according to the formula, it's going to be NC0, so in our case it's going to be 4C0. And then it's a to the power n, so that'd be 3 to the power n, n being 4, 3 to the power 4. And then it's the b term, which is 2x. I'll put that in brackets because it's made up of two bits there. All to the power 0. Moving on to the next term, it becomes 4c1. Reduce the power on this 3. So we reduce it by 1, so it's 3 to the power 3. And at the same time, increase the power over the 2x. So that's 2x to the power 1. Next term is 4c2. Reduce the power over the 3, so it becomes 3 to the power 2. Then increase the other term's power, so that's 2x now to the power 2. Next term, 4c3. Reduce the power over the 3 by 1, and that's 3 to the power 1. Increase the power on the 2x by 1, so that's now up to 2x to the power 3. And then we come to the last term, 4c4. Reduce the power over 3, so it becomes 3 to the power 0. And increase the power on the 2x, so it becomes 2x to the power 4. OK? Now all we need to do is... Get on the calculator and just work these terms out. Now 4C0, you may know, or if not, just type it into your calculator, but it turns out to be 1. And if you do 1 times 3 to the 4, and by the way, 2x to the power 0, anything to the power 0 is 1, so we've just got 3 to the power 4 here then. 3 to the power 4 turns out to be 81. The next term is going to be a plus term, and again, use your calculator to work out 4C1, or you might know this standard result, it's 4. So you've got 4 times 3 cubed times 2x. If you work that out, again on your calculator, you should find you get 216, and then you've got the x on the end. The next term is an x squared term. Type in 4C2 on your calculator or work it out manually. Multiply it by 3 squared, and don't forget here, it is really 2 squared in here. Okay, Work that out, you should find you get another 216, but it will be 216 x squared. This term, 4c3. 4c3, do it on your calculator, or you could, this is a well-known result, it's 4. 4 times 3 times the 2 cubed. 2 cubed comes out to be 8. 8 times 3 times this value turns out to be 96. So that's going to be 96 x cubed. And then you've got this last term, which is then going to come to 16, if you do it on your calculator. So that's going to be 16 x to the power 4. Now, clearly, you can see how quick this is compared to writing out all these lines here. And so whatever integer power this was, if it was 5 or 6 or whatever, we could write out something like this and then very quickly work out the terms and generate the expansion. Now, I've given you this example just so that you can compare the methods, but it is quite important that you look at some of my other examples where I've handled expansions where we've got a minus here, for instance. You've just got to be very careful that you don't get caught out over how you lay it out. So do try and have a look at that tutorial. Anyway, I hope that gives you some idea of how to use this particular method.